Hello, everybody. This is Anthony Brogdon, your main man, uh, doing this Black history thing, keeping you uh, informed, hopefully inspired, uh, educated, uh, and all that good stuff is what I'm trying to do. One of my things is my aim is to inspire, educate, and entertain. Watch out. The, the train has left the station and we are jamming here at Strong Inspirations. Let me tell you something. I got a lady on the channel. I'm so excited she is on. She going to tell you some stuff that's going to blow your mind. It's mind-blowing dialogue from a lady who wants you to know this. Watch out. Now, you, as you know, there are good things happening at Strong Inspiration. Right, let me tell you something. I'm over 260 videos strong. I, 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 people are like what I do, that they are, some people are finding me. Some people that I tried to reach uh, almost over a year ago are finding me. People are coming on more than once because, you know, in the, 40, 50 minutes I got them, they know more than what we share here. Did you see the video I just loaded with a guy whose great grandfather was on the last slave ship? He knows this. And then he developed a town in Alabama called African Town, not just by himself. It was 110 on that ship. And there's a bunch of them that, that developed this town in Al near Mobile, Alabama. Did you see the one where a lot of people, and, and it's really on the rise now, the uh, celebration of Juneteenth all across America. There are parts in the uh, mid-South Tennessee and I think Kentucky, whatnot, where they don't celebrate Juneteenth. They celebrate what is called the 8th of August. Watch that video. There's a couple of them on there on that note. Do you see the video I have with Madam CJ Walker's great great granddaughter? Watch that video. The video I got with Ida B. Wells' great grandson. Watch that video. The video I have with the two granddaughters, great great granddaughters of a gentleman who was once enslaved. He got his freedom and he uh, started a car manufacturing company. Watch that one. You see the one I got with a lady out of Ireland? She says she knows somebody in her family had some relations with some African-American people. She knows this. Watch that one. How about this one? Did you see the one I got with the lady who lives in up? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's in Canada, and it's a town called St. Catherine, where when the slaves escaped, they ran that far north to get away. And Canada said, we ain't letting you take them back. Watch that one. Watch this one a lot. Tell somebody about this video. Hit the subscribe button to Strong Inspiration. It's free. It don't ask no information. All it does in real term is let me know you like me. I like you already. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to keep giving you this good content because content, I'm going to keep finding people like my guest today. Uh, hit the like button on this video. Watch, she's smiling. She, she, she said, hey, come on, man. Like, I can't wait to get to talking like this video. Hit the notifications bell when the videos come up and I'm doing uh, and releasing four or five videos a week. I'm, I'm, I release one in the middle of the night because I can't sleep. And I figure, hey, what's a better thing to put me off than to share some history with you, my friends? And then tell somebody about strong inspirations. Don't keep it to yourself. Just, just send them the link to the videos and tell them to subscribe because you a subscriber. How about this? And I don't say this often, but follow me on Twitter at A Strong Dream. Like my Facebook page, Strong Inspirations, Business in the Black and Black Business Book. 
Uh, you know, I got my own festival coming up uh, uh, May 27th through the 29th in Kansas City, Kansas. I want you to join me on that. It's go I'm telling you, you're going to have fun like you've never had fun before because I like to dance. And we gonna, I'm going to have a DJ that's going to cut them up. And we're going to honor some people out of that area. You wonder why Kansas City, Kansas? Look at the video on the channel where I interviewed a guy whose great-grandfather escaped from Missouri, ran across the Missouri River, and ended up in this town called Quindaro. I want to see it, and I want y'all to join me. And it's a nominal fee for the weekend, very nominal, under $100. I don't like telling people what things are, uh, but under $100, and I feed you the whole weekend at the fish fry on Friday, the picnic on Saturday. How about this? Watch my movie, everybody. I'm this, I'm serious about this black history. And watch this, it's called Business in the Black, The Rise of Black Business in America, streaming on Amazon, and then read my book. It's called Black Business Book. My sales are up. Get you a copy of this. And if you don't learn nothing new after reading my book, I give you money back. Just send me a message say, I, I knew all that. Because if you know some of these names like C.H. Patterson, the guy who owned the car manufacturing company and, and so many others, then you, you, you real good. And so get a copy. All I do is on my website, which is businessintheblack.net. Now you hear me, and I say this often, you know this, you've been watching me. I say this term strong a lot, right? Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. And grace, and that is the introduction to my guest today. She's a strong lady, watch out. You'll see. Uh, come on, introduce yourself. Let's get it on. Thank you for being on Strong Inspirations. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. So my name is Amanda Lima, and I'm the communication specialist here at Amistad. And I'm super excited to talk about our work because, oh my gosh, last year we were a powerhouse, despite the fact that it was COVID. And I'm also really excited about what's coming up this year, too. So... <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. It's beautiful. Now, yeah, I don't know if you watched the video, but let me share this. I asked, I talk about my guests a little bit before we go into the story. I want my I want my viewers to know who you are. And so are you from New Orleans? Now, hold on. First, Amistad is in New Orleans, right? Yes, we are based uh, physically on Tulane's campus, but we're an independent community-based archive. Are you and from New Orleans? No, so I'm from Massachusetts originally, and my family is from Brazil. So I'm first generation in uh, the United States. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. Now you got something there. Well, I want to delve into that. So you say from Brazil, do you know uh, of, uh, any history in Brazil? Have they told yes. the stories? Um, so I know a little bit uh, about my family's history in Brazil. It, Brazil's kind of similar to the United States. I mean, it has an incredibly complex history with race. I mean, over 5 million uh, in, enslaved Africans were brought across in the Middle Passage and uh, endured, I think the, the average, and fact checking on this one, I think the uh, average life expectancy once you touched the soil in Brazil was like six or seven years. So it was incredibly brutal. And uh, Brazil actually has like a, a tie with slavery in the United States because it was the last country to abolish slavery. And actually after slavery ended in the United States, many Confederates moved to Brazil to kind of continue um, their, their lives and the promotion of slavery. So it's kind of this like dark complex connection. Mm. Um, so yeah, my family kind of told me a little bit about it, but uh, most of them live there. I'm the only family member that lives in the United States from that. Oh, really? that mm -hmm. So they, they told you that, why? Um, so I think similar to, you know, white Americans in the United States, it's important to know the history of slavery and race and kind of take ownership of white privilege. And so for me, you know, I have to 
took account of that in the United States and also with my history and ancestry in Brazil. And I don't know too, too much because a lot of our family, um, our documented records are kind of difficult to, to find because um, Brazil actually had a dictatorship in the 60s and my family had to flee Northern Brazil to Southern Brazil um, because some of the family members are involved in politics there. Mm. So a lot of it is kind of sadly unknown. So we kind of just pass things down through stories. Uh, So I know a little bit about the fact that my family, some of them were European. And then I have some great grandparents who were native Tupi. Um, But yeah, it was more just the Brazilians are incredibly proud of their uh, history, culture, and um, everything from like dance to music to sure. food. So uh, yeah. living in the United States, it was really important to connect myself with that. So, you know, to yeah. keep that bond alive, they would talk to me about it. I love it. Now, now, now uh, let me ask you this. Before Brazil, where were your family? Do you know that? Um, a little bit. Uh, so I think many of them were Portuguese and oh, really? I know um, some Spanish, though I think like many other Latin Americans, um, a lot of uh, ethnic heritage comes from Europe, Africa, yeah, and sure. uh, indigenous South American. Sure. So it's kind of a, a mixture of everything. So them telling you that, did that, did that uh, open your interest to history? And that's why you oh. decided to work where you work? Because you could do communications in a number of places. But did you seek out this as, this is what I'm interested in doing and helping grow, what have you, what ha- helping it, you know, get the word out, whatever, whatever, right? Oh my gosh, yes. So I actually previously worked at the W.E.B. Du Bois Center in Massachusetts, Whitney Battle Baptiste, who is incredible, amazing, love her. Um, she runs the center. And I actually, what, she was my, my mentor. She taught me so, so much about uh, anthropology and archaeology specifically related to Black history. And she kind of sparked the interest along with, you know, my family's connection to Brazil. So it's kind of like the, the, the joining of the two worlds. I originally started off in archaeology and then I did my first dig and I was like, wow, I really don't like digging, um, but I do love history. So okay. I kind of took my strengths in the archives and um, I originally was a teacher here in New Orleans. I taught uh, Louisiana history, and then I transferred over to Amistad because I was originally using Amistad's resources in my classroom. Amistad has this really, really great um, online digital resources for classrooms um, related to Black history. So I was using that, and then I just loved the work that they were doing and I missed working with like physical documents and so I was like can I I would love to even just volunteer here and they picked me up and I started working on the staff and I've been incredibly happy ever since. I love it I love it now like when you said you taught uh uh uh, New Orleans black history is that Mm -hmm. that, what were some of the things that you might share with the students that you would teach them? So I specifically taught Louisiana history, but uh, the focus when I taught it was to, because it was, it was eighth grade students and you want to kind of showcase how this history is incredibly important to them and how basically, you know, though this happened decades and decades uh, ago, what happened in the past is still influencing them today. And so, uh, I mean, there were obviously moments that were difficult to discuss, but it was, I taught everything from slavery to the civil rights movement to obviously reconstruction. Um, I talked about, because New Orleans is incredibly unique in the fact that 
especially under the French and Spanish rulings. Uh, there was an, a large free black population yeah, here. Well, yeah, sure. I remember hearing these stories. Yeah, so teaching them about that and um, the importance of religion here, because Louisiana obviously is the largest Catholic um, state and religion obviously influenced um, social norms, especially when you go from French to Spanish to uh, American ruling, sure. uh, what religion was uh, practiced influenced the laws and the views of slavery. So kind of discussing that in, in detail. Um, we talked about a lot of things, yeah, obviously. Well, sure. yeah, that's, that's, that's a good coverage there. And so how did you know to teach this though? Because coming from Boston, you had to do the research to know what to tell them though, right? Is that, is that how it goes? Yeah. So I, so I actually, my undergrad was in uh, anthropology, African American history, Latin American history, and women's studies. So I had a little bit of training back in Massachusetts and I was certified to teach in Massachusetts and then I was recertified to teach here. But it definitely took a lot yeah. to learn the extensive history here. And that's again, why I went to Amistad. And again, they were so wonderful and helpful. I'd go to their talks um, that were really great. They, would, um, they do conversations in colors, which is programs that get activists, artists, historians to come and speak about their work. So I would go into the audience and sit and take notes and get yes. uh, additional resources. And, and if I had any questions, they would give me uh, firsthand accounts, photographs, anything I needed for additional lessons. So it was great. Okay, let me, I, let me I stop there. So now what, what is, now Amistad is what? And why is it called Amistad? So Amistad is a community-based uh, archive. And we were originally started in 1966. And we originally held the American Missionary Association collection. And why I'm saying this is because that collection held the works, um, held the documents uh, for the Amistad case. So this is what we were originally named after. The Amistad case is really important. A lot of people okay. probably know about it because of the movie that came now, out. Isn't that his first slave ago. ship or something like that? So the Amistad case is incredibly uh, important and interesting because uh, this is the, the uh, this big, uh, I guess, it, it brought up a big discussion about property versus human beings um, because this happened in the 1830s. So this was after the 1907 act that prohibited the importation of slaves. Okay, so let me stop you. what happened? Um, 54 enslaved Africans who were legally brought from West Africa revolted on the ship, took control, and uh, basically they left one person alive to try to steer them back to Africa. That person though, tricked them and brought them to America. They originally headed to uh, the eventual place of the Havana, it wasn't successful. When they uh, landed in uh, the Northeast, they were tried for, uh, for murder and piracy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back, yeah. let's go back. <laughs> to the beginning, the Amistad is a what though? The Amistad, the name is the name of the ship. Okay, that it's a leaves. ship, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This ship leaves where? So it left from West Africa, was headed towards the Caribbean, though okay. when they were when the slaves revolted, uh, the one individual that they kept alive of the original crew that captured them, um they the original goal was to head back to Africa. But okay, let me stop you there. Failed. What happened was these these Africans are on this ship. Yeah. Do they know how many? 54. Okay, 54 was on this ship coming away. Then mm -hmm. they revolted against the ship. Mm -hmm. So somehow they got from up under the tunnel, wherever they were, and they killed everybody but one person. Yep. Okay, okay. They yeah. threw them overboard. Uh, do they know how they killed them? 
Um, it's documented, I think, in the in the paperwork of the court, the court documents and stuff. Um, probably some brutal, brutal ways. And uh, it's I, when you think about it, it's yeah, incredibly yeah. impressive. Yeah. Of, um, all these individuals and, and the fact that they were communicating with one another and were successful in uh, organizing this all without, you know, when you think about it, like the resources. Uh, you just, mean organizing the revolt to, 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 to get the people that were on, the, that, that were take that were the, 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 the workers on the ship. Yeah. Do they know how many of them it was? Um, I know it's documented, but I can't think of the number off the top yeah. of my head. Yeah, it might be 20 of them or something like that, uh, what have you. So w when they kill them, where do they kill them at? In the waters before they got to off the, uh, where, where, where do they think that they took over the ship? So it was while they were aboard the ship, um, okay. La Amistad. Okay. And they were, yeah, they were still out at sea. Okay. So that's okay. why they were like, all right, let's take this opportunity to go back home. Cause right. obviously they didn't want to come to the United States. Right. Um, and so why it's so interesting as well, when you think about it, when they landed is, so their story was incredibly moving to um, a bunch of Americans and John Quincy Adams actually was on their case and it was tried in the Supreme Court. And, you know, again, this is a, the big question of these are individuals whom you are trying for murder and piracy, but you also don't view them as human beings. You view them as property. So. OK, let me stop you there. Hold on. I'm getting this right. We're getting there for my guests. What you're saying is they the, the guy who they left, they told him, take us back to Africa. He tricked them and brought them to America. Yeah. Okay, they get to America, and then uh, the people in America want to try them for murder for killing the people that was bringing them here. Yep. I and on top you. of that, it was illegal. Again, it was uh, this was in the 1830s. So this right. was after the 1807 Act prohibiting the importation of slaves. So the individuals that captured them were also doing something illegal. Yeah, because so, at 1808, you weren't supposed to bring any more people here. Exactly. Right. Oh, I and, love it. Okay, now we, okay. Yeah. So, so, and so then pick up what you just said when they were on court, John Adams tried, was, was it, was their attorney? Yeah, he was supporting them and um, oh, really? a bunch of missionaries as well. And so in our collection that, uh, that's housed here at Amistad, and it's also digitized so people can view it from home. Um, the so many letters just uh, of people donating money in support of these individuals, and uh, I will say they eventually were they got back home, so it's it has a lovely ending. Um, when you say back yeah, home, it, back to Africa, yeah. So okay, let me stop you there. When we get there, mm -hmm. you 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 on point. What happened? <laughs> they, they're in court. Where? In where are they in court at? Uh, it was New York mm -hmm. for murder and whatnot. And then yeah, they and got if I, off. Mm -hmm. got also, you. there's there's really uh, really great sketches of all the individuals. So if anyone's interested in seeing oh, really? like, the faces of everyone, they can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I got you. So now we're moving. We're grooving. We're grooving everybody. So then what happened is all this happened this makes national news yeah that's why people are able to send money and to help them out and what have you do you know this in the court case what was the deciding factor of why they why they got off why didn't they be, become uh why weren't they found guilty trying to <laughs> trying to remember the specific ruling um i think it revolved around the parameters of the situation the elect illegality of how they were captured and right. I um i think it stems from uh and then a couple other factors but Plus what they were doing where it was illegal anyway yeah and okay mm -hmm. okay so now what happens is where you're located 
they decide to, to, to call this center the Amistad. Yes, so we originally were formed by the uh, United Church of United uh, Church Board for uh, Homeland Ministries, and it was originally at Fisk University in 1966. Though it was eventually moved over to Tulane's campus in the 80s, and we are the first place to document the civil rights movement, actually, which is kind of cool. And we are the largest and the oldest uh, archive. Um, again, that's documenting the civil rights movement, though we also document basically all black history and some uh, other forms of ethnic history. So kind of like all the diaspora, which okay. is cool. I got you, now we grooving. Okay, so now let me ask you this. Who started the, the center? You said that earlier, but let's go, go back over. Who, who was the founders of the Amistad Center that you work at? Um, so the collection, that, the American Missionary Association collection, as it sounds, is a missionary collection. And so the uh, United Church Board for Homeland Ministries is who, can, who, collect, uh, who created Amistad. Um, and when it moved to uh, Tulane's campus, and obviously from there, we collected uh, a, a wider array of things beyond that original collection. That original collection is massive, massive, like over 100 feet long of just individual Hollander boxes. And it documents from the 1800s to the early 1900s talking about indigenous history, uh, black education, every it, so many different topics. And the, yeah. there's thousands of photographs too. It's, it's quite impressive. So now the, uh, the, what happened on the Amistad, understandably, and you just answered this, it's not the only thing that you talk about, but that is maybe one of the focal points of your exhibit, uh, of your uh, collection. See, it's what we are named after, and it's an incredible story that we like to look back and remember. Yes. Um, but we have over 800 different okay. collections okay. that span hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet. Um, and we connect with so many different communities and families that to say it, it is one of our main focal points that we'd like to you. talk about, but I we, I mean, you had mentioned earlier about Africatown and we have an original photo of Pedro Lewis and an interview really? that was done with him in the twenties. And actually um, Amistad has a partnership with the community in Africatown. We did a uh, program with them last year. We oh, really? assisted them in doing oral histories we're, we helped them um, uh, organize their collections over there. So. All right, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, so now, uh, um, what are you all called? Are you a museum or what, what do you all call yourself as the title? So we're an independent community-based archive an archive for individuals that don't know is kind of similar to the museum, but I like to kind of add the bonus of you can come in and touch stuff. Of course, you know, with supervision and gloves and yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure. necessary tools, but any individual for free can come to Amasad and ask to see collections. So similar to, you know, if you, anyone wants to see the physical letters regarding the Amistad case, if anyone wants to hold like an original photo, as I was saying of Pudge Lewis, um, we have like hundreds of reels of film. Um, we actually did a program recently talking about Ed Pincus and hundred, um, what was it like? Uh, hundreds of hours worth of civil rights film that hasn't been released yet. People can watch that now. Okay, uh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, tons and tons of stuff. And the, the big point about community-based means that a lot of archives and museums and just kind of the history around these institutions is that it's, it often is kind of closed off 
to only academics, historians, et cetera. And, you know, we wanna separate ourselves from that and obviously be inclusive to individuals whom, you know, our collections represent. Yeah. And most of our collections are donated to us either by uh, the individual who was famous or their families or individuals who have just, you know, we have people that find stuff in their attics and they're like, oh, what's this? And ends up oh, being yeah, like you. this historic document. So, you know, I mean, we did a program and I think it was 2019 where we did exhibits uh, at the public library for people to view. So I it's got you. like our Love walls it. aren't physical, you know, we're we kind of scatter across the city. Let, let me ask you this. When and, 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 uh, you got things, what, what is the oldest document that you think you've seen? Mm, so we have like a written envelope with a letter from the 1700s. And so let me preface by saying that we don't necessarily have the oldest stuff. Because when we think about Black history in the United States, um, documented things, uh, and the United States history isn't really old in the grand scheme of things either when we think about world history. Sure. So a lot of our stuff is mostly from the 1800s, 1900s. I got but yeah, you. the oldest thing that I have touched was something from the 1700s. Yeah. Oh, we even man. have like a drum from the 1700s that was used in Congo Square. We have a ton of cool stuff. Oh, my, I love it. Let me ask you this. How big is your building to, to, to do this? I mean, you know, the, the, the center itself, is it four floors, three floors? And what's the layout of, the, of, of this? Um, so similar to kind of other institutions, we have our fiscal space and then we have a storage facility because, you know, yeah, when you have yeah. over 800 collections and 250,000 photos and all this yeah. stuff, you know, Space is very limited. So yeah, we have our physical space on Tulane's campus, and then we have an offsite storage area. And kind of similar to other places, you have your little reading room, which is where researchers and individuals who want to view documents sit. And then we have um, temp temperature controlled stacks okay. and uh, okay. different floors that have our collections. And you know, it's an old building, so we have even a crickety old elevator with like the sliding doors yeah. that you <laughs> go yeah. in, go I got up. You. Let, let me ask you this. So now in your center, um, it I can say I want to see something uh, of whatever note, then I go to the computer, pull it up, go to a person that will get that document and hand it to me. I got to show my driver's license. How do I see these documents as a, as a person? You know, just a lay person, and, you know, you know, in, individual. Yeah. So the process is pretty easy and great. And if anyone has any questions, um, you know, we have a, a great reference staff that individuals yes. can call and email and yes. talk to. Um, what's a really great thing is sometimes you don't even know what you want. So, right. Exactly. Uh, you might think of a topic that you find interesting and you might not know too, too much about it, but you want to know more. And so our reference staff, I think you, you've spoken to Philip, incredible person. Um, have, they have an extensive knowledge of all the individual things that we have. And so we can help you in research and looking up things. So you can email or call and be like, I want to know about uh let's just say because i was recently reading about this brazilian history in the 60s right. or i'm really interested in interracial marriage in right. the ninth, the 20th century i don't know really where to go and so philip or lisa or other individuals on our reference staff could be like actually there's this collection we might not know about because it was just opened up it's called the cartwright collection uh marguerite cartwright collection okay and um, what you'll do is you'll come in, you'll fill out a form, you'll show your driver's license, and we'll sit you at a table, and we'll pull all these boxes for you, and you know you can spend as much time with them as you want, just flipping through things, taking notes, taking pictures. Pictures are allowed, and yeah, 
Okay. Get to okay. know that personally. I, 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 uh, it sounds like you're, uh, uh, and, and I love this, one of the largest in the, in the country or the world. Uh, what, what, is, what is your, your, your ranking? Is, is the Smithsonian bigger than you all in terms of black history? Are you all the, the largest and the, the most well-recognized? What, 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 what would you say your, your ranking is if there's such a thing? So, you know, when you think our, our, um, I, 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 when we think the Smithsonian is a museum, we're an archive, so we're a little bit different from them. You can't uh, necessarily go into the, uh, you, you can't, you don't really have as much access necessarily as a, with a museum than you do with an archive. I got you. Um, our basically similar institution would be the Schomburg, which is based in New York. Um, but with, regarding ranking, because we were formed in 1966, we are the oldest uh, our independent archive that documents uh, Black history, and we do have the largest collections. I so, number one. <laughs> uh, okay, so people around the world uh, who do Black history or, or, or some, they know of you all. Yeah, we get international requests all there of the go. time. As, and now, go. especially because of COVID, yeah. it's pretty uh, convenient because a service that we do offer, because, you know, COVID's still a thing and will be a thing for a really long time, is a lot of our collections are digitized. So, you know, you can go on with the example of the Amistad case and read all the documents from the comfort of your home I or with it. collections that aren't necessarily uh, digitized. You can call, email and ask us to send you PDF copies or uh, mail you photocopies of things. So okay. again, the, the walls of our archive, you know, might be physical, but our access isn't. Do you, you all, uh, and I, you might've alluded to this earlier, you all have events that you, mm -hmm. Uh, sponsor host for people to come and so give me a couple examples of some do you like have an annual festival or annual weekend or gala any of those kind of things so again because of covid yeah. Uh, yeah. um we used to have in-person events that we hold like hundreds and hundreds of people um it's obviously you know limited yeah, to virtual yeah. viewings now we just had this really great event where we showcased um, the amazing work of Ed Pincus, who documented uh, civil rights organizing in Mississippi. So we showed all this beautiful old film um, virtually. Okay. Uh, during the summer, we did uh, a program with uh, Reverend Derek Tucker, who is based out of Africa Town. Okay. We showcased the community's work, and we sh uh, showed an oral history interview that we helped okay. conduct virtually. Um, oh my gosh, we've done exhibits across the city. We've had famous writers here. Uh, for example, we talked about the 16th 1619 project here. Uh, tons and yeah, I got you. I mean, so yeah, you, you don't have a. Um... A ballroom, or and or do you have a, a huge theater uh, in the area where you have these events? Are they on site at at the location? Um, so it depends on the the program and the size. So for smaller events, we'll do stuff here because our physical reading room is not necessarily really big. It's actually yeah. kind of a smaller room. Yeah. Um, but you. you know, we are. Though we are independent, um, because we're based on Tulane's campus, we use yeah. that to uh, our advantage. So we I use see. like their, <laughs> um, see, uh, what is it? Uh, not ballroom, but um, their stage and stuff yeah, to yeah, sure. showcase like bigger individuals. What 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 is the uh, what is the website and how people can find out more about about the uh, center? Is, is so, it, are you called a center? What do you call it? The Amistad Center? What is it called? Um, I mean, casually speaking, we're like, oh, the, the center. Um, but 
our full name is Amasad Research Center. Amasad Research. And okay. we're, again, we're kind of easy to search because if you just look up Amasad Research Center, and Google will come up. Okay. Um, our website name is amasadresearchcenter.org. I got you. So I got you. I love it. Is it, let me ask you this, and my I guess maybe my last one. Is there a question that I have not asked you, or something that comes to mind that you want to share? Um. Are there books about the Amistad Research Center? So we've been featured in several books. I mean, any researcher who researches here mentions us. Yes. We've been in articles in the New York Times. Um, but uh, we we have some like art books that we have, have come out about our collections, but we don't actually have a, a, a book about our history. Oh, really? Okay, I got you. Um, but... Uh, I guess, yeah, we're kind of just like sprinkled everywhere when it comes to our history, our impact, and um, kind of what we do. I will say that one of the the ways that I, I guess like of the numerous reasons of why I love working here and I love the kind of our mission, it's like the staff that is that's here and we have individuals that are, you know, born, raised here. We have individuals whose history in New Orleans and uh, connection to Black history, obviously, we have a very diverse staff that's wonderful. Um, And individuals whose family members have also had a great impact in New Orleans. And I just genuinely love that we're constantly thinking of new ways in which to represent what's going on in our community. Cause that's kind of the most important thing is uh, we have such an expansive collection but we don't want to limit it to just us and to research historians. We want this collection to serve a purpose to a multitude of people. And so you. how can we help students and teachers? How can we help individuals who are researching um, about their home and their families who are from New Orleans. And I mean, for example, myself, since my family's back in Brazil, uh, I actually used the center's documents to research some of Brazilian history. And that felt really impactful to me. Yes, sure. And just on the individual level. And so I love that our impact spans from a one person to hundreds to thousands and that's what's it. really meaningful i love it well hey i i really appreciate you come on the show it uh uh and and share this with us because i i've been in new orleans i like new orleans i i i'll be honest I, i've been there for jazz fest <laughs> i come to the one thing i have not been to is the uh, mardi gras I have hey, it's Mardi Gras season right now. It's starting. I've been to New Orleans, so, you know, Essence Festival and so on and so forth. Uh, I got to come to the center because I, I actually, uh, I've been on the campus of Tulane and uh, walked around. I didn't know about you all and I wasn't doing what I do now. I'm coming. And I want everybody else who are watching this, Google I'm gonna start research center. Go to the website and 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 do some research. Look at what they got. It's going to enlighten you, as what she shared. Uh, I thank you for coming on the channel uh, wholeheartedly, uh, um, because I learned something. I didn't know that you all were that big. Yeah, you all them y'all number one. <laughs> and tell them people your your the the, the the CEOs and all that. I said y'all number one. I claim it. In my way, you're all number one. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, and so to you, I say, uh, uh, I, uh, with all sincerity, uh, I like what you're doing. That somehow uh, you have got a bug in your ear. I like history. And, and look at where it's taking you. You at the heart of it all. So please stay strong, stay safe, stay on your grind. Keep telling people about the Amistad. Let everybody across America and the world know about what you're doing as you are doing this and effectively doing this. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping to do with this interview. Uh, and to everybody, I say this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, because I know you didn't notice, that, maybe not even heard of them. Hit the notification bell, 
tell somebody about strongest. I'm, I'm finding some uh, some really unique stories, and this is one of them. With that, I say bye bye. We out. Thank you.